So today we have an episode for you that's continuing in our Wedding 101 series. We're gonna dive right into the first look. <laughs> I guess we are gonna cry. <laughs> So if you are new to weddings and you're like, what in the world is a first look? Let me explain to you. So sometimes they opt to see each other privately before the ceremony. And what this means is that we create a very sweet, quiet, intimate environment for them to have a moment together. And then we dive right in to their portraits. Now, a lot of our clients love this because it allows them to actually have one-on-one -on -one time to enjoy the day together. We love it because it provides so much portrait time. So it allows us to do one round of bride and groom portraits, which is awesome. And a lot of time, most of the time, we also get the wedding party completely done. Like bridesmaids, groomsmen, the whole wedding party, individuals, it's just done all before the ceremony. Sometimes we even get family photography done. So that means the ceremony ends, the light is golden and beautiful, and we only have to focus on getting epic portraits of the bride and groom, and they get to go to cocktail hour. It's like a win, 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 win for everybody. But while a first look is super helpful with the timeline, there are some logistics about it that can make it a little bit tricky to shoot. And so I wanna dive into our best practices and help you avoid any complications that could happen while you're photographing a first look. So the first thing we do when we arrive on the property, I am kind of getting the lay of the land and before I even go in and talk to the bride, I'm walking around and getting ideas of where I can potentially have the first look happen. So because the first look happens before the ceremony, a lot of times that means the first look is happening in the middle of the day, which is not the best time to take portraits. And so because of that, that means that I am looking for locations that are protected from harsh light, that have decent backgrounds, that are in open shade, because you can shoot. I teach people all the time. You actually can take some great portraits in harsh light. However, a first look, you can't control if they're leaning forward and getting that light off their face. You can't control if they're gonna turn around the, other, the wrong way. You have to be in a situation where you have a little bit more control over that harsh light. And so a diffused open shade area is what I'm looking for. So some key things to look out for, you don't want this location to be a million miles away. It's just easier if it's not this super long process to get to the location where you want to host the first look and have it happen. So you want it to be convenient. You also want it to be out of sight of guests. There's no greater way to screw up a first look than to put them in line of sight of aunts, grandmas, friends from college yelling out the windows. That's really gonna ruin the vibe of a first look. So make sure it's in a place where they're gonna be protected from seeing guests early. You also wanna take into consideration that you don't have full flexibility to just shoot with one strategic background. Your background has to be a little bit, a little bit wider with a little bit more um, capacity to be moved around like can't have like a construction zone with with orange cones behind the bride's head and still have michael trying to capture her reaction and so there are different ways to approach this but in general i'm looking for the background to be ideal more so in the first look location than i am some of my other portraits because with portraits i can strategically control what i'm shooting in the background whereas the first look i don't have complete control all right so let's talk about the general flow of a first look in, in an ideal situation, I'm gonna explain what happens. Now, there are some things that can come up and and like any wedding day, things can be unpredictable, but um, normally the bride is in her dress. I'm texting Michael and I'm saying, hey, she's almost ready, let's get the groom on out there. And, and I tell him like, hey, let's put the groom here. She's gonna walk up from the tr this, this direction, tell him to turn around or she's gonna tap the shoulder. We, we create the setup and then I go back to get the bride. While I'm getting the bride, Michael is telling the groom a few things to set them up for success. We have to tell the groom who is gonna tell him to turn around. Most of the time we like for the bride to be the one to say, okay, Chris, you can turn around, but we need to specify, is she gonna tap you on the shoulder or is she gonna call you and have you turn around and look at her? Um, we tell him, let her come to you. Don't go to her. Why? Because we set him up strategically in good light and ultimately we want her to come all the way to where he is because if he walks to her quickly, he could just put them in horrible light and it's a disaster. And then you, you can't interrupt a first look and scoot them over them like, okay, now be romantic again. Uh, Michael also has funny like disaster stories from weddings where people have moved. And he normally tells the groom some of those stories just to fill the silence while we're waiting for the bride to finally get to the first look location because sometimes she's very delayed. So Michael is also telling him things like, take as long as you want, five seconds, five minutes, if we're running behind, we jokingly say, maybe not 15 minutes, but we, we want them to know that we are not gonna interrupt until you look at us and say, 
we're ready for portraits. And the reason for that is because we, we're trying to set this up for them that like, we're stepping back. This is about you guys. We, we, you don't have to do certain things or react certain ways. Like just enjoy this. This is your chance to just be together without anybody else, not even friends. It's just the two of you. So take your time and then look at us and say, all right, we're ready for portraits. So while Michael is talking to the groom, I'm also telling the bride the same things, right? So preparing her mentally, like this is your time, take as much time as you need, but also letting her know some things like, you know what, I'll take the bouquet and I'll give it to the maid of honor. You actually don't want the bouquet during the first look. I am also telling her things like, all right, you're gonna tap him on this side, he's gonna turn around that side, I'm gonna fluff the dress. A lot of times brides are very concerned about the dress being fluffed. So once I get the bride all set up, I normally fluff her train, make sure her veil is straight, she looks great, she's getting ready to walk. I will say, okay, go ahead and stay here. I will tell you when we're ready to get started. And normally I actually vocally cue. I will say like, all right, Sarah, whenever you're ready. And she hears that and then it's up to them. So overall, this first part of the setup of the first look, it's just most important that you stay in communication so that everyone is on the same page. And it's important to note that if they are not on the same page, if, if she says, all right, you can turn around and she stops walking and he walks to her, deliberate, deliberately two things we said not to do, we don't intervene you ever we we just photograph what happens and we told them something different and if the light is a little bit off and they complain about it we will explain that later but like we do not interrupt the moment so now what we're going to do is talk about now that we're all set up the first look is getting ready to happen we're going to dive into what my role is and what michael's role is as we're photographing together the first look if you're new here michael is my husband my second shooter he has been for over a decade he actually has a second shooter mini course where you can learn exactly what he does on a wedding day for all of you who are just getting started in wedding photography just had to throw that in there because if you're new here you're probably wondering like who in the world is Michael? So Michael has different roles and I have different roles. So when we're setting up the first look, my goal is always to make sure I capture the groom's reaction. And that's because that is what she, the bride cares about the most. Her reaction is great as well, but it's not as important as his. So I love to shoot with a longer focal length lens if space allows. So normally my go-to would be the 85 millimeter. I have shot this with a 135 before if it's a wide open space. 70 to 200 is normally what Michael has on uh, his camera body, but the goal is to keep, uh, to stay at a distance. And I want to honor that request. Sometimes brides will even say, can we make sure y'all are pulled back pretty far? If that's the case, then we really make it a priority to have a longer focal length lens on. I am pivoting back and forth from photographing the bride coming closer, photographing him like waiting, you know, so I'm, sometimes his eyes are closed, you know, he's just nervously waiting. I am, I am jumping back and forth, but I always know I've got to be ready and on guard as soon as he, she taps the shoulder. He's either gonna like just turn slightly like this and look and she's gonna come around or he's gonna turn around prematurely. I just have to be on my A game to get his reaction. Michael's goal is different based on the setup and where we are. If there is a really great wide, like great light, they're in great light from the side angle, then I want Michael to back up and get that shot of like her walking to him and it's kind of a wider shot. You can see both of them and her dress trailing behind. I want that shot um, and that will be a priority for him. And then he's immediately looking to get a good angle of her face once they're interacting and hugging and all that stuff. But for me, Normally I'm not getting the wide shot because I just want to stay ready for the groom's reaction. So once they have their initial interaction, he sees her, that initial reaction is done and now they're just interacting. Uh, normally I will step in a little bit closer. Some of the initial like intimacy, like those parts still matter, but I get a little bit closer and I adjust to make sure I have more of an ideal angle. If the first look is going on for a while, uh, I will get creative and I will do some composition. I'll zoom back, I'll get closer. I'll take some tight shots of them holding their hands. Sometimes though, first looks are, they're like, oh, you look great and we're ready. And it's like, oh my gosh, I don't. You, so I try to shoot everything I need pretty quickly on the front end in case it's like a split second first look and they don't really engage. So as soon as the first look is kind of winding down and they look at you and say, all right, we're ready, um, I'm ready to go. They're already in good light normally. They are normally already in some type of close to a core pose. If you have no idea what a core pose is, it's my the foundation of my posing system. I have a whole course on it. If I have an idea of how to just take where they're standing, how they're standing, and just adapt it into one of my core poses, I'll just gonna, I'm just going to go from there. It's actually ideal to be able to look at them and say like, 
I might, you remember everything from your engagement session. You're like basically already posing yourself. This is great. Just get a little closer and we're going to dive right in. Um, and then we, we really dive right into getting as many portraits done as possible. So it's another reason why picking a great first look location is so important because, you know, I can get so many portraits done if I don't have to trek across a field to actual good light um, for the beginning of their portrait time. So we normally prep the bridal party ahead of time that they need to be generally ready, like in the next 20 minutes so that they're not scattered everywhere. Mike one could just go find the whole group and bring them out. I get so much done with a couple, all of the traditional poses, the traditional shots, like everything you would need in a wedding gallery, I get done in just that few minutes that Michael is running to get the bridal party. And then we do bridal party and then I'll do even more bride and groom portraits before we start hiding from guests. It allows me to get some bride and groom portraits and the wedding party. And if I have more time with the bride and groom, that's great, I'll take them to a new location. All right, so now that you have kind of our setup and our general approach to the first look, I want you to see a real first look from a real life wedding look so you can get a idea of everything I just told you in real life. Okay, so that's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna have you stop. We can come a little further. I'm gonna get him set up a little bit, but he's gonna have to walk backwards a second. So hold on one second. Yeah, let's scoot right, but not have him turn around, obviously. <laughs> you keep going, keep going, right? There's perfect, okay? Yes, you are. You're doing a great job at it. This is a great spot. Um, so, Michael, the only thing is she is going to have to, you know what I think we should do? I'm going to have you guide him so that he can face this way. She needs to walk from the back. Okay. All right. Oh, my gosh. So, all right, I'm going to have her pass. Yep. So you are actually going to come this down, walk down this path. Mm-hmm. Okay. <laughs> You can come with me. Oh, look at you walking through. Oh, this is great. So this way, your face is shaded, and I see you walking down. But the trick is, I'm going to try to keep this clean. Do you want to hold it? Are you fine? Oh, you're so chill. I love it. Okay, so I'm going to turn the sides up, because I'm not going to shoot quite from the back. Okay, so. Um, I think we're, I think we're good. Um, so when you walk up to him, yeah. the trick is don't stand behind him and tap him. You're going to kind of come right to the side of him. Okay. So oh my goodness. Okay. You can, um, so if you are him yeah. and I'm you, yeah. you'll be like this okay. and that way he doesn't turn backwards and I, we have both of you. Okay. No, totally. Um, you look, I gotta take a picture of you. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Laugh over Tyler for me. Amazing! One more, one more. Gorgeous. The light is unreal. I need to move to Montana. <laughs> okay. All right. So I'm gonna go up there, and I'll tell you when to. And take as long as you want. Five seconds, five minutes. Mm -hmm. This is like a really important part of your day. Okay. All so right. deep breath. I'll tell you when. Okay. Yes. She's gonna be coming right like this. Okay. okay. And then you can turn. And I'm gonna turn. Now. <laughs> yes. And once she's here. You do whatever you want. <laughs> Just don't run away. Just don't run. Okay. Here, Michael, can you scoot to the left? Yeah. Whenever you are ready. Mm-hmm. <laughs> 
<laughs> oh no! <laughs> yes! Heels are amazing! <laughs> Little stilts. Oh. Oh my gosh. You ready? Oh my gosh, you too. You just look at them. I'm like, you don't even. Yes. I'm like, yes, I know. This is so great. Some people, we have to coach them through every little thing. Y'all are perfect. No, no, no. You're fine. Believe me, you are fine. And if we do need him to crouch, he did when dad was putting his jacket on. <laughs> yes, dad. <laughs> yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can't tell. You can't tell. Us. Oh, my goodness. And she, she's like, sometimes I just smile too much. I'm like, there's literally no, no such thing. There's no such yeah, thing. Yeah. <laughs> no. In the quiet moment in the hall. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> this is, this is literally perfect. I think we should do a few traditional portraits here. All right. So I hope that was helpful in general. As you leave this video, I hope you will walk away knowing first looks can be a little bit tricky, but we love them because they can really transform a wedding day timeline and make the day uh, more actually more emotional, more intimate, but also create amazing portraits because you have so much more ability to have portrait time. So we love them. We hope this makes you feel more empowered to execute them on your own wedding days. If you loved watching this behind the scenes, imagine watching that behind the scenes, but for weddings across the country, even across the world, portrait session. I mean, you have access to so many episodes in KJL Access from all the things that I have shot behind the scenes the last five years. So if you want to have access to all that, plus get content every month, plus connect with me live on Zoom calls every month to have me answer your questions, all of that is available through KGL Access and it's only $29 a month. So that information is linked below. We would love to have you in the most engaging KJ community that we offer. Also, we have an entire playlist on our YouTube channel where we are collecting our wedding 101 videos, where eventually we will have the entire wedding day captured and we will have information so that you feel like you are empowered to execute every part of the wedding day. So like and subscribe so you don't miss the next Wedding 101 episode. If you like this, either questions, leave them below. Thanks for watching. Bye. Bye.